Hi, everyone. I'm Shirley Vercruzzi. I'm with the National Film Board of Canada based in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I'm here today with Tal Cantor, who is a filmmaker from Jerusalem and whose film Letter to a Pig, uh, what beautiful film, is at Spark this year. Um, so welcome, Tal. And I think just before we um, talk about Letter to a Pig, it would be really lovely just to get some background on you for people who don't know you. So maybe we could, um, you could just tell us about where you are now, where you're living, and how you started your journey in filmmaking. Um, so first of all, hello, and thanks for having me. Um, so I'm, I'm currently in Jerusalem. I'm based in Jerusalem, which is also my hometown where I was born and where I uh, work and create my films. And uh, I would say my background is pretty much in visual arts, first of all. And quite later on, uh, I encountered the animation world when I uh, came to study in Bezalel Academy of Arts and Design. Uh, which is where I graduated from and where I teach in the past five years. And actually this is where I fell in love with the medium of animation and therefore entered the whole world of cinema and storytelling in this kind of way, yeah. So did you always know you wanted to be a filmmaker? Not at all, not at all. I, I was thinking really different directions as a, such as a psychology or um, education. So uh, it really uh, took me for some detour uh, that uh, right now I'm really happy with where it is, but I, I had no idea uh, a few years back. <laughs> and do you remember the moment that that happened where you decided this is what I want to do? Um, yeah, I would say it was quite a special moment. I, I submitted for several schools in Israel, also for psychology and, and different, I, I tried different things and I went to a six months of traveling in India and I received a, a acceptance letter when I was in a very small village in a, on the top of a mountain, barely with reception. And my mom called me and told me, well, you need to decide now between this program because this is the last day to say yes or no and I just remember I was watching this amazing view and I thought okay animation it is um, but I didn't know what kind of world I'm really entering uh, when I said yes I only knew that I really really wished to move my drawings I wanted to move my paintings and let them live uh, on a timeline and tell stories in a different way than I used to do before, which was, um, you know, more framed for, for a single image. Um, so that was the very beginning of this journey, I would say. Thanks for sharing that. It's a powerful moment. Um, <laughs> can you talk a bit about the progression from your film Under the Small Sun into the film in other words. Um, they're very they're very different films in terms of the style and, and your progression, I guess, is what I'm very interested in knowing about. It's interesting to observe these two because um, true, they're quite different. Uh, first of all, from technique point of view, this one is in stop motion and 3D and the other is in 2D and live action and this technique I started to develop afterwards. Um, but I would say both came to uh, production with a very um, uh, experimental approach for storytelling. Um, I think uh, uh, in both films, uh, I allowed myself to explore during the making of the film uh, and discover the film as, as I go, as I, as I created, uh, especially in Under the Small Sun. It was uh, to discover the character, how to move it, what is the story, where the character goes. And it was part of the decision of me and my co-director, Shachar Davis, that we will allow this as part of also the philosophical 
subject that there is in the film, which is, uh, you know, I would say a, a moment of liberation of a stuck person in his old apartment or a new apartment um, and, and encounter with, with the other, with, with some different other, which is the cockroach. Um, and in, in other words, it was uh, maybe the first film I did uh, in solo directing or the first big production I did uh, on my own as a director. And it was important for me, first of all, to change uh, the angle and explore the world of dialogue and, and words, which is something that we don't, I mean, we, we do see in animated films, but, but, um, but I felt like that there is less and less of, of this notion of the cinematic moment of a dialogue between two characters and to put the words in, in, in the center, uh, the words that, like to, to become the heroes of the story or the inability of the words to, to overbridge between two people. So this was the starting point. I don't know if it answered the question, but it was different approaches to, to explore some subject in the film that the very beginning, you don't necessarily know uh, what it will be at, at the very end. No, that's, that's wonderful. Um, I loved in, in that film, um, the, um, in other words, where you let the character like literally picks up the word right, or sweeps the words sort of gently away. And, um, it, you know, for people who haven't seen it, I guess that's um, maybe a hard image to, to capture, but um, is there something about those moments and how those words move that are special to you and how the characters um, did that or that flow with the, you know, with that, energy of the word itself, like you were just talking about. I wanted in this film to, to give words, to, to embody uh, the words, to give them life, uh, but also to talk about their inabilities. And sometimes, you know, the words can be empty or even dead and left like dirt on the sand when, when they, they are without meaning or they do not connect to some pro some actions, um, which is what happens. You know, the father uses a lot of words and the daughter says like, it's just words Dad." <laughs> so uh, actually as a person that really loves words, poetry and literature, it was interesting for me to, to examine this on the other way around and, and see how we can play with, with this notion of what is a word, one single word that's you, you want to put there between two people, what happens when it lies there on the table. Um, so animation is a great tool to, to portray something so abstract, like uh, picking up a word and what did I just said? What was this? Why did I say this word and not some other thing? I should have said this, I should, I should, so. Yeah, thank you. So then from there, you went on to make um, Letter to a Pig. And I kind of want to ask the same question, I guess, about that transition um, from, you know, in other words, to letter to a pig. But also, the film is so rich in texture. And I think you were just alluding to that, too, like with the words and all the different layers and the multimedia that you use. So it's just a, um, it, it feels so seamless. Right, but I'm quite sure that there's a lot of work and a lot of planning, and 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 how you came to achieve this beautiful, seamless work that is very complicated. So, um, I guess in two parts, if you know that what you took from, in other words, to get to letter to a pig, and then how you achieve um, that seamlessness, because in your work as an illustrator and a painter and all these other skills that you know you're doing all this work so it's a big question but <laughs> thank you for doing your best to answer it <laughs> i would try i think it was a natural thing to take the 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 language i develop in in other words and try to push it one step forward it's a, at least what i tried to do in this film uh because both 
of films talks about the subject of memory and how we remember things in our mind, the subjectiveness of uh, how something is captured in our head. And I thought in Letter to a Pig, I mean, it talks about a collective memory and from a different angle, but since this technique is so uh, playful and allows me to, to, um, to show the subjectiveness of memory uh, using this mixture of live actions and free hand drawing lines, I thought it will be good to continue with this, but I wanted to, to take it one step further and make it more complicated for myself in a way, I don't know why, but, and, uh, and in this film, I decided to, to add another component, which is the animation painted on, on paper to, to bring it back to manual painting and give the, this uh, hand-drawn mistake feeling that this very emotional aspect that only the, the human hand and, and the mistakes that comes with it can shown on paper and to mix all of this together. Um, in order to achieve something that is more, I would say, emotional and expressive and rough and less clean, because I think in other words, it's more about the distance and the coldness between uh, the two characters in the film. And, and here I wanted to give, uh, I mean, there's a lot of this black acrylic stain in the film that is vibrating to give it um, another layer of, of expression. Um, so it was a very, very long process to, to achieve the right amount and the balance between all different components, the, the, the actors, the live action footage elements, the, the lines of the characters and, and the, the stain, the, the, painted on, the paint on paper. Um, and and I, I would say it was maybe more than a year I don't know if I can flip the camera here to show a little bit of the, the drawings I have on the wall of the, I don't know if it will work, let's try it. <laughs> um, let's see. So there is a, a lot of research to, to see how the characters would look like until finding the right, uh, the right elements. So it's a little bit shaky, I'm sorry, but so the, the, process of defining the character's look and the visual world of the film was a, a long process of reduction, like in other words, to, to, to find the right uh, balance between what is necessary to show and what is not unnecessary. Um, and, and, and then to, to, in production, to translate this uh, intuitive way of work that, that I use to my team. Suddenly I have a small team of animators and to explain to them the, the, ra the rational way of using, okay, this line connects to, to this, the eye of the old man and, and how to connect the different elements in an in a organic way was something that was developed along the production uh, as we, we grew better and better in it um, as, as we worked on the film. I was struck too, like how many times as you're talking about it now, like when, you know, in, within the scene that characters would disappear and then come back and, and you know, and how their movements were all um, unique to them, it felt like so. Um, congratulations, because it really works beautifully. You get such an incredible sense of each character. Um, the use of color in a letter to a pig was very um, powerful, but very subtle, in my opinion. And I just would like to hear you talk a bit about how you decided when and what colors to use. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. I'm, I'm happy you asked about that, because uh, often people don't it goes into their subconscious i guess that the film is basically pretty much black and white and and uh, maybe the only color that is present there i would say dominantly uh compared to other small uh, little colors there are it's the pink color um it's the color of the pig but it also shown in 
different moments in key moments along the film in uh, on the main character's face um, and I thought it's interesting talking about the subject of the film and the connection of the image of the pig along the film that accompanies the, the story uh, to, to give the, the pink color uh, a voice um, and, and to show that in a way, you know, the, the, this is the color of our skin tone, but it's also the color of the pig. It can, it can come in a, in a soft, uh, compassionate connotation, but it can also come in a harsh or violent or, or you know, full of rage uh, moments. And, and I wanted to show this duality in little key moments that appears very briefly in the film, uh, but to say that the, the, this color appears not only in the character or the symbol of the pig, it, it also exists within us and can come out in different moments. So it was very carefully chosen. It, I, some thought maybe it's too delicate. So the fact you asked it and makes me happy. Especially when, with the main character, when it first comes in, I think it's in her ears, maybe, and a little bit around her nose, and it and it immediately caught my eye um, because it was yeah. So I, I, it's very um, I think like the entire film is just so textured and 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 balanced, but you feel like you can just dive into this you know this world. So sort of begs the question of where does this story come from? Mm. Um. So it's a um, story that is based on my personal experience as a young schoolgirl. Uh, an encounter I vaguely remember with a Holocaust survivor that came to give his testimony during Memorial Day uh, in my school when I was little. And after this meaningful encounter, I had a very, I would say, unforgettable, strange and harsh dream that really stick with me for, for many, many years and, and eventually became the, the urge for me to create this film because it was so powerful and so, uh, it was almost like a riddle for me. How come I have this, this mm -hmm. kind of dream? What, what is... What are the layers underneath it? Um, and then I decided to, to explore this subject um, or this, this uh, moment of the class and the dream uh, in the film and discover that it lies on, a, an, on, on layers and layers of meanings, uh, deep meanings for me of how it is to, to to grow up here in Israel in the shadow of these stories and what it does to, to me or the younger generation. It brought really big questions that preoccupies me until this very day. Uh, but it all started in a, in a small little uh, moment that's, that's kept in my mind for all these years. So. I wanted to add, you know, one thing that I've observed just moving off of Letter to a Pig for a bit is um, in a lot of feature documentaries now, we see um, animation. And um, you worked on the film um, Advocate, Advocate, The Advocate. Yeah. It's in a, an award-winning movie. And I'm curious, I, I just saw the clip with your work, right? That's on your website and how it intersects in the film. And it's quite, Amazing. And, and I just wonder if you would talk a little bit about how it is for you to collaborate on 
somebody else's project, but still it's your style and like it's unmistakably you that's in there. So what was that process like for you? It was, it was quite a refreshing um, and I learned a lot from this to put in a way to put your um, director's, uh, it would say ego aside and, and to come as a, as a creator to serve someone else's vision, someone else's film which is first of all, really refreshing and, and, and great, um, great opportunity and great exercise to, to see how can, you, can, you can bring your own language, but, but also uh, to listen carefully to, to what other directors want from, from your language in their film. And in this particular film, it was really interesting because the, the whole use of animation came from the um, um, censorship needs for, for to, to conceal some of the characters from legal or ethical reasons. So it was kind of a, um, um, how do I say? It was not an artistic uh, uh, choice. It was more of a mandatory thing for the film. But what I found really beautiful is that the directors wanted to still show the, the the human face of the characters to give them ability to speak what they're going through along the film with still respecting uh, um, their anonym, anonymity, you say. Uh, and, and, and it was an interesting challenge to, to find the right balance because it is a documentary, because it is a um, technical need almost for the film. It's not an artistic, beautiful uh, decision. To, to find the right uh, balance between what is um, uh, object, as objective as possible and, and also uh, to conceal some of the faces. So it was a long process of finding the right balance um, and the right language for the film. Uh, and eventually we developed something that is using, in a way, my kind of uh, drawing lines in animation, but also combined with uh, um, archive archive footage uh, collage uh, that is also bringing another layer of documentary into the film. In each different day or different episode in the film, there is a fl flickering uh, collage of text of uh, from the trial or from uh, from press and and. Um, newspapers. So it was really um, uh, a great journey to, to discover how to take your own, my own uh, um, language into a new place that serves the film the best. Uh, it is not necessarily a kind of a, a visual language I would use for my own films, but this is what this specific film needed. It was a nice uh, connection of both, I think. And, and that was done in between uh, um, your two films, right? Yeah, yeah, I started to work on Letter to a Pig and then Advocate and it was a bit in, in parallel, yeah. Yeah, and do you th how, how do you think one influenced the other in that process? I mean, uh, in a way, I'm not totally sure. I guess uh, at some point now that I'm thinking out loud, it's the first time mm. I'm thinking about it, uh, maybe I, I really learned to appreciate even more the form of, of documentary and the usage, usage of animation in documentary. And uh, at some point I decided that the whole class scene in, in Letter to a Pig, I wanted it to feel as, as, as a documentary, as a film as possible, um, to, to give this notion of, um, you know that it really happens in front of our eyes and we are really in this class and, and I was glad that several people asked me if the the actor is the actual survivor um, because it meant that they really felt like he 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 really is the, the the person that speaks I would say that also there is some shots in the class that are actually uh, uh, documented uh, uh, moments from uh, different classes. Uh, I went to 
during Memorial Day, I went to several uh, schools and documented the, 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 the kids listening to uh, the survivors as they speak and, and their reactions and their body movements and how uncomfortable they are and how they scratch and how they talk to each other. And some of them are in, implanted in the film. So there mm. are some documentary uh, footages in there. Uh, it feels like that was a, a great opportunity for those to sort of be alongside of each other for a while. Do you, um, I'm curious, you said that you're also um, teaching now. And um, do you, what would you, because you, know, you have such a unique, identifiable, I would say, probably, voice, right, in your work. And how do you um, relay that um, importance or to students? It does, like, is that something that you focus on with them or? Well, I, I do not focus with my students, particularly on, on my own technique. But I was lucky enough to, to, to teach one of the most, at least in my opinion, one of the most important classes during this four-year study. It's, a, it's for the first-year students, and it's called uh, animative thinking or animation thinking. And it's less of a technical class versus a conceptual and like a, a playful laboratory for them to explore the different range, ranges or voices that animation can have to tell a story. Um, so I encourage them to explore different mediums, different uh, techniques, different uh, uh, crafts. Um, and I open, I open, I try to open their mind uh, also by, by sharing with them different kind of uh, animation shorts from around the world um, to really to, to, to give them you know, the, 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 the notion and the understanding that animation can be very playful and they can combine many things they love inside their own films. Uh, so this is something that is very important for me to bring uh, to this class and happily I, I see every year really new and refreshing voices, experiments and, and, and little journeys that they begin. Some of them really take it until they're uh, graduation films even, they start to develop a little language um, mm -hmm. in this very early stage. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Thank you. Um, because I think they have yours as such a great example of what is unique. And, you know, from my observation of animation, it's always the unique voice that's the most interesting, right? Um, because, uh, because it's unique. Um, I'm very curious, um, it's kind of a, a, just a, a random question, but um, who were your influences in terms of animation, if you had any standout ones that you wanted mm. to do? Well, that's, that's really diverse and, 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 and it, it varies, it changes along the years. Um, I guess I have some kind of all time favorites, such as uh, the short When the Day Breaks, uh, mm -hmm. that, that is an interesting combination, but also such a magnificent way of storytelling. Um, but also, I don't know, films like uh, uh, Boy in the World or, or Cat Soup or, or Mind Game, that really films that allow themselves to stretch the, the, the the form of animation and, and storytelling and emotions, um, I, I find always really fascinating. And even you know filmmakers such as David O'Reilly as well, that is quite far away from what I do, but always inspires me because this uh, I would say boldness to 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 break the the, the classic form of of uh, communicating with the audience. Uh, I find it really refreshing. It always reminds me that we can, we can really expand always the way we, we, we tell our stories. And there's not only one way to animate and not all, one way to show a character or uh, to, to, to bring a narrative out. Yeah. And can you just, um, like, Letter to a Pig, um, have you been able to travel with the film and, and experience audience reactions? 
Well, luckily, it, the film just started this April. It's a uh, round, and I was lucky enough to go uh, both to Anima Fest Zagreb and Annecy. There okay. was a two weeks of uh, uh, amazing, uh, after almost three years of not traveling with Corona, it was really amazing to, to go and experience physically the, the audience with the film. And I was really, I, I, I didn't know what would be the response because uh, the film really talks about something so local in a way, but I was really surprised. I was really, really surprised by the, the responses of the audience. I mean, it was a beautiful, uh, intelligent audience of filmmakers and animation filmmakers. So they could really appreciate small, small, small details, but they also uh, um, expressed, uh, surprisingly for me, a very deep understanding of what I'm trying to say with this film. And I got many really emotional responses of people that it really touched them personally, whether from the aspect of the generation uh, gap uh, that they saw in the film, or, or the way they capture the figure of the pig um, and or, or how it was for them as kids to, to being exposed to uh, history, dark stories uh, that's uh, brought into their classroom. And I even got one, one uh, filmmaker that really uh, recognize small references I put in like one shot there is a reference of the Jewish Museum uh, in, uh, in Berlin and, and she noticed this references so it was mm. really 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 a happy happy response that for me to see that people really see all the layer not all of it but so many layers uh, and also um, give some interpretations that allow me to, to study my own film in a different way, which is always what is so beautiful with the encounter with an audience to, to, to listen and see what the film does to people, what kind of questions it rises up. So, yeah. How does all of this, um, you know, bring you to what will be your next project? Do, do you know what it is? Is that helping percolate? Like those ideas or? Um, well, I have several very vague thoughts and, and beginnings in my mind, uh, but it, it's quite early still to, um, to give it a, a label or a name, what kind of project it would be. Uh, it might be a new film, it might be something else. Uh, it's a, it's a time that I'm allowing myself to, to observe the, the responses from this film and, and discover maybe I don't know, the, the, the new narrative that wants to come out because, uh, I, you know, you need a little bit of time, I call it, to get a little bit bored and get inspired again and, and see what, what the, world, the world needs now as well, not only what I want to do, but what is... Uh, corresponding well with what is happening uh, right now. So I think it's still quite early to, to, to say something concrete, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's always um, lots of filmmakers of varying stages in their careers who are watching um, these kinds of talks. So um, you answered it a bit in when you talked about how you work with your stu students. But is there any advice that you would have, or um, I guess the word advice is fine too, you know, um, reflection on if you're just starting in be working as an auteur animator, um, what are some of the, the thoughts that you would share with people? Um, I would say, first of all, that I think it's really important to defer your personal taste or what you see that is out there uh, from what you would love to do and what story you would love to tell and to pay attention that you you since animation is such a time consuming slow uh, sisyphic beautiful but sisyphic process it should really be something and it sounds like a cliche that comes from your heart and and not uh, 
uh, and not to, I would say, uh, uh, satisfy anyone else but 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 your own um, you know passion. It needs to be something that you you are passionate to wake up in the morning and and work on it and tell it uh, to to the world when it, once it's ready. And the other advice I would say, which is something I discovered that was the most one of the most uh, significant experience uh, in this film for me is to find a good team because. Mm -hmm you don't really work on a film alone and once you have a good team that you trust and you can collaborate you can ping pong ideas you can share and get an honest response and reflect back I think this is something so precious to find the people that you want to that will stick with you and go with you on this journey uh, I think this is a good uh, good recipe to 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 do the film in a, in a good way and feel good about it, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything else you wanted to, to share or? Um, um, <laughs> thank you for, for this conversation. I really enjoyed this, uh, yeah. your questions and your observations were really nice. <laughs>